Was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? Listen, it is our 20th episode. Amazing. Hey, the 20th Amazing. episode. Um, and on this one, I had to bring somebody close to me. He happens to be a celebrity podcaster. Like, he interviews the tops of the tops. All right. The greats of the greats. Um, I happen to be on his show one time. Come in. Come in. But uh, we're going to really talk about the journey of podcasting. Is it good for brands and businesses? Is it good for you? Should we continue? Did we think about quitting? I don't know. We're just going to talk hmm. about it. What do, you, what, what do you feel, Moose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is dope, man. I think it's uh, it's always cool. Like the the whole concept of this show, two main things that you're gonna walk away with, right? Uh, understanding the blueprint of those who came before you or those who are successful, and also paying tribute to those while they're still here, right? So I think this is somebody that we're gonna be able to do both uh, with him on the show. So yeah, I'm excited. His name is Sean Anthony. But let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. So you already know what time it is. It is the review of the week. You know I mean? All right. This one is from My203. All right, My203, we appreciate you. It says Nikki and Moose, but the other one got cut off. So we're going to keep it moving. I love this podcast. They bring positive energy mixed with fun, lightheartedness, and also inspired through storytelling. I love the air horn. Yeah, man. <laughs> Inspired by these stories, God is great. My, my. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm better at these. On the, on the I do, read. Okay. I'm doing these better on these you. reviews. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> now, shut up. Look, to be honest, real quick, real quick. Um, I normally try to get like the most recent one and everything like that. But the most recent one, shout out to the one that says I'm a kid from Chicago. Shout out to y'all, to you. You know who you are. You wrote a novel and you uh -uh. really tried to intentionally they mess me up. They were trying to trip you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they were yeah, trying yeah. to trip you up. They catching on. Right. No, I, I'm not going to read a novel. You, you got to give me like <laughs> long words. Short though. Okay. Let's, let's do that. Okay. I just... He really, like, I got to show you, is like really trying to trip me out. But let's wow. get into this. Um, first, Moose, how are you feeling that it's the 20th episode? This is special, man. This is special. We said every 10th one, right? So yeah, 10, yeah. 20, 30, 40, and beyond, we're going to celebrate big. So uh, it's cool to still be here, man. I think we're only getting better. Listen, listen. Let me let me bring in my guest. Let him introduce himself. I'm, he's going to do some name drops that is out of this world. Hold on, hold on. I'm bringing Sean. Hey, what's up, Sean? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'm excited to be here. I mean, I made it to the Nikki and Moose show. You guys are crushing and doing your thing. Let's light this thing up, man. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to talk and ready to tell everybody what's going on. Listen, first off, let's start off with what is your podcast? What are some of the names? Just some of the names. Don't hurt them yeah. too much. You know what I mean? Don't <laughs> hurt them too much. But like, like yeah. what are some of the names? Yeah, so so you said it. I'm a celebrity podcaster. I've interviewed some crazy people. We're talking about uh, from Grant Cardone to Ed Milet to Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, uh, New York Times bestselling authors like Seth Golden, Grammy Award winners like Estelle, and you name it. And what I do now uh, is I help entrepreneurs build a brand, and I'm known for being the host of a top podcast, School's Over, and Now What? That's me in a nutshell. Listen, wow. listen, hold on. First off... Extra air horns, right? But I'm low key, he was one of the main reasons why we have Nikki and Moose, right? So, real quick side story: I jumped on his podcast and everything like that. But I kept seeing him like teach other people, right? And so I was like, "Yo, is it time?" Like, nah. And here's my Leo uh, pilot. 
black and Puerto Rican side that had too much pride to ask him anything. I didn't wow. ask him for a single thing, but I was like, let me just watch what he's doing. And I was like, man, you could just ask him. It's Sean. We talk like on a reg now. Like, right. but I didn't ask him anything. So first lesson of the day, if you know somebody <laughs> who does something that you want to do, just, just ask them. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Always, like you always get asked me, I'm here. I think what's so crazy, I'm pretty sure we'll get into it, is that your podcasting changed the game for me, man. It changed my life. And I just like pouring into people and seeing them do some epic stuff. And it, it attracts everybody, you name it. So, so I'm going to start off with one question, then we're going to have a little conversation. So what made you, let's start off with basics. What made you start? Yeah, I, I think uh, you got to pay attention to what people are saying to you when you're younger. Uh, for me, I just started connecting the dots. So when I was 14, my life changed. My brother went out to college. He became like this big nightlife party promoter. So at 14, I was going down to these parties at North Carolina a and and I was partying with huge hip-hop artists like Rick Ross, Young Jeezy. I was standing on couches with bottles, all the crazy things. But the reason why I tell you that is because at the age of 14, I was learning how he was networking, communicating with big names, you know, getting the people excited about coming to events. And I started throwing my own parties. So I threw a party when I was 14 for, you know, high school kids that were graduating. And what's so crazy about that is I made $6,000 at 14 on my first party. So I was like, oh, like the light bulb went off, Nikki. And I just wanted to go to college, but I didn't want to go to college for no education. I wanted to go to college for the bag. And I went to Winston-Salem State University. Shout out to my HBCUs. And I just got well known as a party promoter. And the cool, crazy thing that led me to podcasting is that I noticed everybody was just graduating. They were just leaving school. They were going off. They didn't know what to do. I took that same mindset of how to network and communicate. And actually, when I went corporate, I was promoted six times in four years. And I took a job that took me so far away from my family. One day, I almost fell asleep. And I pulled over to a Dunkin' Donuts uh, a gas station. And uh, shout out to them in them espresso shots. But I stumbled across this weird looking purple app. This weird looking purple app, the podcast app. And it's so crazy to me now thinking about it because like, like when I clicked that app, I started listening to like Evan Carmichael, Chris Drama Path, uh, and my let I say these names because all these guys have been on my show, but I noticed something real quickly. They didn't look like me. And I knew that was a, a tribe of people that they couldn't resonate with that I probably could. Um, and I was just ready to tell my story. And that's what made me want to create the podcast. School's over now what? So so I, now I got a question for Moose. I got a question for Moose. Moose, um, did, did you ever think that you would have a, a, a podcast? Like, I have a video and I'm going to pull it up for those people who are watching on, on YouTube. I'm going to pull out this video of when we were in Michigan and he was in yeah. the, the S2S podcast room. My man had like big headphones. It was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, podcast coming soon. He like, yo, hold on. Wait, do y'all hear me? Do y'all, yeah, what's was, good? <laughs> that was my first time in a real life studio like that. So so first off, to answer your question, no, I never thought so. You know, and, and, and Sean, to your point, like, that whole concept of a podcast, I think when you're not connected to that or, or just anything in general, you always make it bigger than what it is, right? And to see how things, how far things have come now, especially with recently with COVID and everything exploding, I was just like, man, this is awesome. Like I'm in the studio, I got the headphones on, I'm speaking and I can hear myself and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is dope. But yeah, no, I've never... Uh, Never would have thought we'd be 20 episodes in, what, probably less than a year later or something Ooh, like that? Ooh, right. So, okay. So, from your standpoint, right, what is some of the benefits that you see, like, businesses and brands getting into the podcast? Now that you're in it and you're, like, paying attention to more, like, what are some of those kind of, like, benefits? Yeah, from what I'm noticing, man, is that, Every, everyone can be a business now. I think the beauty of the internet is that there's so much information out there that everyone now has the key to get an LLC, an S Corp, to start a business, to get a product or a service, a website, just the basics to collect some payments and go out there. So with so many businesses, basic economics tells you that competition is going to go on the rise. 
So what's going to make you stand out than maybe even the newbie or the veteran? Then this is forums like this. It's the opportunity to have open open dialogue and maybe like Sean says, share a little bit of your story. Connect with people who you normally wouldn't connect with so that now that your customer gets to know you a little bit better, they're more likely to not just do business with you, but stay in business with you because there's something more than just what they see on the outside, which is your price, your branding, right? Like all of that stuff is great. But I think now as they get to know you, they build a relationship with you as a person, not just what you provide. Now you have a loyal customer you know, for as long as you're in business. So this is one of the benefits that I'm seeing with these forums. And it's also opening up, up other opportunities. So that's actually a question I want to ask for Sean. I'll circle back on that in a little bit. But that's definitely one of the main benefits that I'm seeing. Sean, same question. Yeah. I, I think uh, it's, it's giving people the, the prominent voice. Like people are becoming prominent voices in spaces that that they didn't even know that they should be in, and I mm. think that's that's the that's the key, that's the catch. Um, and I'm pretty sure we'll get into it. There's so many different things coming out now, uh, whether it's social media apps uh, that people are looking at and they're just not realizing the power of their voice. You know, I'd be really interested to know some some podcast stats of since COVID has happened, how many people have just jumped into podcasting? Uh, because I, I know what it's done for businesses. I mean, we happen to be one, but I, one I, I, feel like Moose, I feel like Moose. I feel like Moose has some stats for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy, man. So I looked this up. Eight hundred and fifty new pot. Excuse me, eight hundred and fifty thousand mm. new podcast have. Mm come live since January of 2020. So just in the last 12 or 13 months, nearly a million new shows have aired. That's crazy. And we, and we happen to be one. We just, well, happen, one we just happen to be one. We yeah, are we part of the statistics. 000. We are part of the statistics out here in these streets. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, you know what's you know what's crazy. I think what what happened, right? When we look at COVID, we look at all those things. I think so many people that were speakers, so many people that were brands, so many people that that are normally on stage and said, "Okay, how do I continue to get my message out?" Yeah, and I think yeah. that's what really excited them to to jump on a podcast wave and really make an impact, literally from their homes. Listen, I don't want to take over all the questions. Go ahead, Moose, because I, I have like nineteen in my head, yeah. like for both yeah. of y'all. I don't even want to <laughs> answer nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm still I'm feeling like this is a real high energy episode right now. I don't know, we a couple minutes in. This is feeling uh very high energy today. I'm loving it. Yeah. Sean, let me ask you this, man. I love in the intro you said that you did you did interviews with people who don't typically look like you. You know, where right. it's easy for you to stay with the crowd that is like yours. Talk about some of the benefits and even the reason why you would say, you know what, I'm gonna go outside of my comfort zone, go to another community. And, and look to spark relationship there? I think it's a great question, man. I think I, I, it's so funny when I look at podcasting and I think about, okay, what makes you different, right? Like, I always think, okay, what makes me different? Man, in the podcast game, like, I really move like a rapper. And the reason why I say that is because I was throwing parties. Like, literally, I was throwing parties for almost a decade. And I knew what could make me stand out is the diversity factor. If I wanted to cater to a certain market, you got to think about it. I'm the guy that would come out of the club and get you to skip the VIP line or bring the artist through the back door. I know how to theme an actual party. So that's like titling an episode. If I wanted to cater just to the African American community, I can easily do that. But I think what made me want to be a little bit more different is I wanted to get access to people we normally don't get access to. And I think the benefit of that is when I'm in those rooms and when I'm in those spaces, I can see it even in their eyes where they're just like, oh, snap. Like, yo, like, like, they, they, like you said, it's an energy that rubs off. And I think the biggest thing that helps me um, is that when I'm around these people, is, dude, I don't dim my light. And when I mean I don't dim my light, it means that I'm coming up full force. Like, I'm coming up full force uh, where you're going you're gonna to have to respect it. And I think it also gives my people access on their intellect and their insights, uh, which I think has been a game changer uh, for my people in general. Wow. Wow. I, I love what you said about that because I think you still are like touching our community by giving that information. Like, l nice. just like you said, like, I think still people like of the minority of the black community and everything like that is still going to be attracted because this is some of the information that we don't 
necessarily necessarily get access to. So I th- I think my question to you is like, what, how do I put this? There, there are some big names that you have, but I think a lot of people when it comes to this podcasting game, that, that fear of asking, that fear of taking that leap to get into some people's emails, DMs, things like that, um, spending money just to get rejected, whatever it was, like what, how did you overcome that fear to get some of the top names that you have? It's like a domino effect. It's like, so like literally like the first, first three episodes, I was interviewing like the cool people from my school, somebody that may have started off a business. Uh, but there, there was something inside of me that said, shoot higher, right? Like shoot higher. And the first big fish that I landed that changed the game in the direction of the show is uh, episode seven. I kept watching this show like on Bravo. Like I kept watching New York Made Out Listening. And there's this guy by the name of Ryan Serhan. And I'm like, yo, I, I just like him. I like I like how his swag is, his aura, how he's making these deals. And I know that he I noticed he was shooting a book. He was going to drop a book. He was also shooting a vlog. And he wanted the vlog to get hot. So when I noticed that, you know, I pitched him. I said, listen, I got this show, school's over. Now what? You know, this is how I think you should be on this show. These are the type of people that I want to see impact the show. And he said, yes. And I want you to get this from this conversation is that sometimes people tell you yes, and you just got to take that yes and don't try to overdo it. And because even though you might go back in the past and say, okay, maybe I could have done this a little bit higher, you got an opportunity. You got to take the opportunity you got right now and move with it. So I did the interview with them. Um, it became a hit. And the reason why it became a hit is because while he's talking, he did the interview while he was traveling with his driver and he had his phone on speakerphone. So his phone's on speakerphone and it's on YouTube. And I'm asking him the best questions I got. Like, I'm jumping in the bag. I'm like, listen, I don't want the Ryan Serhan on Bravo. I want the Ryan Serhan that's on a couch that's with a white T-shirt ice cream. I found out that was his favorite ice cream, right? I just said it to him. His whole demeanor changed, fam. He just he just went to, like, a relaxed space and just kept going gym after gym. He gave me, like, this viral moment. He put it up on YouTube. People asked who's asking him those questions. I left a comment. I wake up the next morning. He pinned the comment on YouTube, and I had over 75,000 downloads, and that was just episode seven. Wow. 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 I don't know if y'all heard that. This is That's keto. Sean, you said that. You showed him all of the ways it can benefit him. And, and you weren't necessarily, I'm not saying that, you know, that you, obviously you did it now, but you weren't necessarily doing it already. It's like, yo, here's my vision of who I can, you know, who I want to have. This is the type of Facts. vibe I want to create. You know, like you sold him on the vision, right? Yeah. And also you told him about the benefits. That's a major key. Would you say that, where does that come from? Like, how did you kind of oh, conceptualize man. that? Because I think that, that's going to make you stand out. Yeah, you got the questions, man. Uh, I remember like it was yesterday, man. It was like, and no one's ever asked me that question. It just it just kind of gets to me excited because it puts me back to like, where did I get that from? A <laughs> couple of things come to my mind, man. I remember it was 2009. I was, I was just becoming a, a sophomore in college. There was this guy who was the number one NBA draft pick. His name was John Wall. And you guys heard of John Wall. And a lot of y'all just heard of John Wall. So John Wall, and I found out I had a street team, fam. I had, a, I had like... 30, I had 35 college kids beating down doors, throwing parties for me. Uh, and, and so I found out one of the girls on my street team, her boyfriend was like his right hand. And I remember realizing that. And I reached out to, you know, her guy, Ty at the time. Ty still, run, still runs with him. Shout out to Ty. And I said, yo, Ty, I got this party. I want to throw John Wall. I know he just got an number one NBA draft pick last month. But I, I want to throw his first, you know, official birthday party here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I remember being bold enough to make that ask. But I also remember sitting at an HBCU at a cafeteria in a table with a guy who just got this millions of dollars of contract. And I'm a college kid. I remember sliding him a paper to sign that he would be at the party. So I look back at moments in my life where I was bold enough to ask and I just repurpose those moments and keep trying to get again. And I think that's that's for me. That's that's what makes me excited and, and, and bold enough to just shoot my shot at people. Sheesh. Um, actually, here's a question for Moose real quick. Moose, did you have a fear, right? 
as this is actually for both of you, but did you have a fear that the podcast would not work? And how did you kind of get over that fear if you did? Yeah, yeah. Shoot, you met, you said the word fear. Yo, truthfully, I was scared. I'm still scared, right? Fear is just, quite frankly, is one of the things that I deal with on the regular. But I think I get over it by running with people like yourself. You know, it's like fear is not necessarily something that's talked about. And I realized because we have a, a, a cool relationship too. That's not to say that it's not there. It's just like, yo, it's there. So what? You know, like we're doing it in spite of it, it, it is what it is. Like, let's just go see if we fail. Let's learn something and change it. And, it, and, and that's why I started off by saying like, Sean, I started to see like, yo, none of this stuff is a big deal. Like being in the studio, you might be like, wow, this is a, it's not. It's really not that. You, if you can find the audacity, I used to say be authentic. Now I say you got to have the audacity to be, like you said, bold, to be yourself. So it's like, yo, if you can have the audacity to be yourself, show up on camera, cut the mics on and have the conversation. And for, for folks like myself who gain confidence through being prepared, then, then you're good. Like if you've done your homework, you're good. So, so yeah, Nick, I definitely would say I was scared. I'm still scared. But just running with the right people, man, it's just like you, you get your reps in and then your confidence kind of outgrows the fear. That makes sense. What's up? What's up, Sean? Yeah, for me, I think it wasn't like a fear. It was more like, yo, how can I stay consistent? I think I think people I think people when you say you're gonna do something people kind of wait and see yo you're gonna fall off at some point how consistent are you gonna be uh, I think so that's what I was really more nervous about uh, just was that you know and just having this conversation makes me think about uh, things that help me overcome fear right and then people ask me all the time how do you keep getting people on your show there's a lot of um, sorry there's a lot of people. Um, that I've gotten on my show, not only off recommendations, but there's also a lot of people I got on my show because I've had these celebrities talk about how was it being on my show, mm-hmm. being, you know, young, uh, young in my party days, my brother was, he was all these different artists. He would literally have me chase down the artists almost to the point where security would get ready, like throw me off like an SUV, chase them down with like a phone just to get them to say something on camera that would then later on turn into promo. Little did I know now I'm connecting the dots as I'm talking to y'all. I got celebrities doing the same thing. Right. Um, so I, th- I think it's just crazy, you know, just realizing things that you did in the past, whatever you're doing um, and realizing that, yo, there's a reason why you're doing it and it'll pay off later on in the future. Can I have an ominous conversation, though? Does podcasting, like, have an end, right? Because so, <laughs> so like, when I'm thinking about, like, our show, anybody's show, really, like, and you look at the, the top people, they've been yeah. doing it for, like, six years, right? Seven years. They have 300 episodes on this uh, <laughs> joint. They have another 400 over here. Some people are at a thousand. And I'm like, so for me, I'm a goal driven type person, right? So for me, I already said, yo, I'm doing this for about, you know, six, seven, right? But then is there really an end to it? Like what it... What is your take on that? Because I really am like, yo, is this something that will always be part of us? Like, are we like (laughs) going to be podcasters for life? Like, I'm cool with it, but I just want to know, is that why some people drop off because they can't see the end? Yeah. Yeah. I think some people drop off because they don't know what they're doing with a podcast long term. Like, I think the people that you see that are here for six years, they turn their podcast to a business. Mm. And I, I think that's Wait, that's the key. Wait, first of all, you're not gonna speed <laughs> past that. Like you didn't just say what you just said. Bring that back. Bring that like back. They, 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 they turn they turn their podcast into a business. That's the only reason why they're doing it six years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like with the podcast listen, I've been doing podcasting since June of 2018. I reached a three-year mark in a couple of months. And it becomes a business for schools over now. What when universities start cutting a check for me? And I'm like, hold on, wait. Let me switch this up. Hold on. What are we doing here? You know, because people are always going to go to school. So I'm like, hold on, wait. What are we doing? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I, th- I, th- I think that's that's when it started turning turn into a business. And I think now it just will constantly keep evolving. 
Like, uh, like and I hope, hope we talk about it, but I think Clubhouse is gonna help a lot of people too. I, no, I, I, I've done some crazy things on there. Hey, hey, listen. <laughs> first off, we're gonna get into what he's doing on Clubhouse and everything like that, and the the uh, event that he has coming. But uh, let's go to. I had another question. I'm just, I'm just gonna hog this. Never mind. Go ahead, Moose. Before I hog it, I promise no, I, you. I'm actually gonna ask this to both of you as well, man. Like. For, for individuals like yourself who are almost like natural born marketers and branders, right? Like, Sean, mm-hmm. like, you mentioned it multiple times, like, yo, I just kind of knew how to capture someone's attention or show them the benefits. And yeah. oftentimes you're doing it in something that's not yet cool, right? Like yeah. for whatever it is, like even with our show, Nick's like, I don't know who had similar idea to, to kind of twist the flight assessment with personal brands and business, right, Sean, with, with what you're doing, again, that diversity piece. It, it's yeah. not necessarily something that's popular. For each of you guys, what do you think are some of the elements that makes that take something that's not popular, that's unknown, to start growing on people? What are some of those elements that's like, yo, yep, it, it's happening? Because, again, you talk about the, the inconsistency. I think some people stop before they gain you know, they really oh, no. persuade people to buy into the idea. Let's go, Sean. Yeah, I think I think um, I, th- I think if the question is, you know, what's stopping some of these people uh, uh, from? Uh, I want to reframe this. Make sure I get your question right. The question is, what's stopping people? Right? No, like think about more so from a, a marketing and branding side. How how do you like? What do you guys do to make something that may not be necessarily popular or viral? Gotcha. How do you start? Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like introduce it that it grows on people. They're like, yo, this is dope. Fam, fam you gotta be yourself. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be yourself. I think, like, here's the thing. There's a there's, there's a billion guys that are probably teaching people uh how to do things with podcasts, how to start podcasts. I know a lot of them because they were friends, uh, but I'll be honest with you, they white. Uh, or, or uh, like I said at the very beginning, they don't look like me. But here's the thing, none of that matters. What matters is who you are. People buy into the person and i think if you're authentic being you there's something about you that's going to relate to somebody where they're just going to become like a raven fan tells either hanging around you or at some point in their life they knew somebody like you that they just would welcome with open arms and i think that's the key man and i think when a lot of people hear me speak um that's the separate thing that's the thing like you know what i could be with anybody but fam as soon as you started chatting i'm like yo i roll with him you know so i think that's the that's the key is being authentically who you are I'm going to say the energy that you give it, right? So, like, if you're giving minimum or no energy to something, like, yep, I got a hat. I just made some new hats. You should have a hat. You know what I mean? Um, They're like, yeah, maybe. You know, maybe I'll get it when I get to it, right? Um, But if you're like, yo, (laughs) you see this freshness? I don't think you understand how many hats I have and how big of a deal it, that I'm wearing this one. You see, it got Nikki and Moose on it. It got deeper oh. than the brand. It got all these, like, it's customized. It's exclusive. It's only made for a few. I'm not selling this for real. This is just an example. Don't you think you're going to have this hat? <laughs> but it's the energy that you give something that is believable, mm. right? Um, I know yesterday... Well, depending on when you hear this, this may not be yesterday anymore, but um, (laughs) I did a live about one of the summits that I'm going to be talking on. And it wasn't necessarily the information that was about the summit. It was about the energy that both of us had talking about the summit, Mm -hmm. talking about what was about to happen. Say, yo, who do we want as uh, 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 a, what am I talking about? Like a special guests, like somebody jumping on, let's find somebody, let's, and giving it more interactive vibe and the energy and people were like, oh, I'm going. Mm. I don't even know what this is. I'm not really sure, but I'm going. So I think for podcasts, I think for any product service that, or just branding that no one really has a true understanding about, if you give that energy Somebody is going to believe it and they're going to, like the energy is going to be contagious. Mm-hmm. Like, and so it's going to go over here and there. Like who would have thought that, you know, a 
Nikki and Moose can get on the charts just based off the energy that we put on it. Like, who would think that Sean's on the charts because of the energy that he puts on it? Like, you know, it's it's things like that. Like, anything is possible if you put energy towards it. If you don't, if it's not working, you got to look at how, you know, how much am I really putting into it? How much am I really believing in it? Because if you don't believe in it, how are you going to expect anybody else to believe in it? I'm just... Yeah, you know I mean, I ain't horn on that one. No, I ain't horn on that one. Huh? <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, that's dope. That's dope. Cause, cause Sean, what I was saying was, you know, sometimes, and you've heard this example a lot of times, like with the new song that comes on the radio. First time you hear it, you're like, ah, it's whatever. And it's that same concept with people in podcasting or just anyone pushing a, a business or a new message out. It's just the consistency part persuades people to start feeling the energy or the vibe or like what exactly that you're doing. It's like, yo, this is actually pretty dope. I kind of understand where he's going now or where she's going now. So I do realize it takes a minute. And that's what I was saying for, you know, individuals like yourselves, you kind of have that natural aura where somebody who's a little bit more maybe introvert or a little bit more passive may kind of fall back and like, Oh, mm-hmm. no, no, no. They're not liking it. Let me run the other way. When in reality, it's like, yo, that's part of it. That's part of it. So Absolutely. So hold on, hold on. Let's. It's We're like 30 minutes into this. I got to get to a key, uh, key question. Uh, let's talk about the bag. Let's talk about the bag real quick, okay? Let's talk about, because I understand brands and businesses, they'll be like, okay, I get it. I may need a podcast. You may have to say one or two more things, but I'm pretty much sold like, okay, cool. So many people joined throughout COVID. It's finally time. I get it. Um, Some people are struggling to see how to monetize the podcast, how to monetize the video, the audio section of it. And slight uh, side note, this is all done by Ecamm. You see this? this you, see, you see Sean right here? You see Sean? You see Moose? Uh, sorry for those who are just listening, but uh, all my YouTube people, you see this social media, you see this is done by Ecamm. And they're doing a 14-day trial. All you got to go is NikkiandMoose.com slash Ecamm, E-C-A-M-M. And you get into that free trial. But anyways, back to the question, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the bag. All right, let's talk about let's it. Talk about what, it. Are, what are some, just some of the ways, right, yeah. that instantly people could kind of like, oh, okay, I can make a bag off this. I can make a bag yeah. off that. Like, yeah. I don't have to wait for a big network to, to grab me up and things like that. Like, how is it? Not at all. I, here's a couple of ways. Like if you're you have a, if you have a if you're a coach, right? If you're somebody that has you know a brand, a product. I don't care if you're selling T-shirts. I tell people all the time: the quickest way to make money is to run ads back to yourself. Become your own info commercial. So I don't care if you're interviewing the the who's who, or even if you're doing a solo episode. Right at that two minute mark, what I do even myself is I tell people all the time: Hey, if you want to learn more about how to build a podcast, or if you want to you know grab my free ebook, you send people down the funnel of you. Uh, that's one of the first ways to quickly make a bag with podcasting. The second way I would tell you is if you're creating a community, a tribe of some sort, start a Patreon, right? You can start a Patreon page. You can have 50 people on your Patreon that can pay you anywhere between $5. You create the level of membership, you know? I remember when I started the Patreon, I only had at the very beginning of the Patreon, like 30 people on a Patreon, but that was an income over $1,000 just coming in easily because they wanted to know more about the episodes. They wanted behind the scenes they want to, you know, scenes that I didn't even put into the actual podcast. Think about what is extra that you can give, you know, people that's listening. And also, too, like you mentioned with the eCam, there's affiliate links that you can have. Right? What products are you using? Can you put an affiliate link? Can you talk about a product that's on Amazon and add an affiliate link? So I would tell you, especially if you're a coach and you got an ebook, if you got a course, man, the quickest way to get money is to be your own info commercial. I had to talk about the bag, Boots. I'm sorry. I had to talk no, about That's good. That's good. Let, let's go into this next piece, man, because uh, you guys have mentioned it multiple times. Obviously, it's a favorite right now. Clubhouse. What's uh, <laughs> what? What's the vibe? Yeah, what's the vibe? Talk talk about Clubhouse. 
Uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Sean do it because he has this amazing club going on. He has this amazing event that's about to pop off. Everything like that. I'm I'm gonna let you talk about uh, your experience. Everything like that. Uh, who brought you in? Yeah, shout out Nikki. Nikki shot me a text. She was like, yo, check out this app. Tell me what you think about it. I didn't even know what it was. So I jumped into this Clubhouse app. You know, I was quiet for maybe about two days and I was trying to figure out, okay, what's my play on this thing? And I think I figured out the play uh, because I have to think about my time. How much time can I actually give to this thing? Because I can't be up here all these hours. I got kids. I got to run this business. That'd be hard to pull off, fam. So my strategy uh, with Clubhouse is creating a community and creating a club, right? So we created podcasts Podcast Seekers Reveal, where we re- where we meet on Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern, and I didn't know what was about to happen next. Literally, uh, we've probably had that club open for about two months now. We're close to over 20,000 members of this club. Mm-hmm. Um, there's about 11,000 people who follow me now on Clubhouse, but I'm only consistently up there. I might pop in, in and out. I see the homies up there, but on Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern. But what it has attracted is crazy. So you think about the biggest podcasters in the world, whoever you think is the biggest, they've been into this room on Podcast Secrets Revealed, moderating. We're talking about me and I was worth a game. We're talking about Lewis Howes, Pat Flynn. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. Earn your leisure. You name it. They've been in this room uh, giving away the game, giving away the secrets. And it's an amazing community full of podcasters that's ready to build their brand. Can, can we have an honest conversation, though? Um, yeah. Has your listening to podcasts, being active on Clubhouse, gone down? Because I know the topic in Clubhouse is, is this going to replace (laughs) podcasting? Oh, my God, we're on this app. This is crazy, right? All that great (laughs) stuff. They may not have sounded like that, but I feel like that in my head, right? And I don't feel like it's going to replace, but I'm realizing that, uh, I need to catch up on my Joe Budden podcast. I uh-huh. need to catch up on Pat Flint. I need to I need to yeah. catch up on almost every single podcast <laughs> that I listen to. I've got to catch yeah. up to Sean's uh, podcast. I got There's so many that I'm missing. I'm trying. And then now I only have like a short attention span. <laughs> like I used to have the whole three hour attention span for Joe. I used, it was there. I was there for it. And now I'm like, bling, bling, bling. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold, let me go. Let me turn this off and let me go back to Clubhouse. Like, is yours? I'm not going to say for everybody. I'm, I'm going to be transparent and say, yes, mine has gone down. Still listen to this podcast, though. Um, but, <laughs> but, but has yours gone down? The crazy thing is, my has it. I think because of mm. curiosity is excited. But you know what's also crazy? The bag has gotten better. And what I, and what I mean by the bag has gotten better is this. And I'm telling you, it's, I, I'm going to give away the game on here because I'm going to put it in. I'm going to give you out a game. Uh, a couple of ways the bag has gotten better. One, as I'm talking, people are like diving into my Instagram. And I, you got to think about it, the community that I'm, that I'm creating on Clubhouse is my community. Right. I help people build brands through podcasting. So as I'm talking, I see Stripe payments getting made. I see mm. people buying ebooks. I see people buying classes. Um, but also, too, for me, when I hop in rooms, I'm so intentional about being in rooms. And because the podcast secrets group has, you know, gaining the attention and people hear me say the big names, when I hop in rooms, a lot of people who are getting new to the app who are big names, they're following me. Um, mm. So here's the thing where where my strategy has changed is I've gotten so many people that are about to be on my show. I'm running out of time and I'm running out of dates because mm. what's happening is that as people on these stages and they're in these main out of rooms and these big names are in the rooms, what they don't know is there's a button that you can press where you can take people into a private room. So as they're in this room with all these people, man, I'm in so many private rooms talking to the who's who's and people I would have never normally talked to uh, that quick. And I'm making some crazy connections, some crazy moves, and they're either on the show or coming to the show or we got something in the works. That's that's crazy. I mean, you got to move strategically in Clubhouse. Like if not, you're going to get caught up in just the FOMO vibes and just 
absorbing way too much content, way too much information that maybe you're not so ready for, right? What I do like about Clubhouse is that you do like listen, like you're literally in the room. Like we always, you got to be in the room. You got to be, you know, at the feet of these people. And right now you can be, right? Now I'm going to play a little devil's advocate. Um, I think it's going to transform into what we typically see with social media. Once these real big names really get the hang of it, it's yep. going to get very clicky. It's going yep. to get um, like super salesy at a certain point, right? And, but at this moment, at the beta stage, there is still so much opportunity that is there. There is so much people, like so many people still getting on that are high execs, that are, you know, big names that they at this moment have about a thousand followers. Where if mm -hmm. you was to go on Instagram, if you go on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, they got hundreds of thousands and millions of followers. You wouldn't even be able to touch them, let alone mm -hmm. get into their programs because that's over $2,000, $3,000, $10,000 where you're going into these rooms and it's free. Like there was uh, me and you were in a room with Dame Dash, right? Yeah, yeah, fire, yeah. fire, huh. fire room, right? There was mm -hmm. one where Swiss Beats was talking about art and Meek Mill was going in about finance. It's all the like things that we possibly couldn't have before. Which we didn't have before. Regular smegular people didn't have before those types yeah. of uh, that type of access. Right. So now you can. Right now is the prime opportunity to take advantage of it, right? What, what Sean's doing with his club and being consistent every single week, not every single day, right? Mm -hmm. He makes sure he hosts a room every single week, bringing in people in his lane. So he's always yeah. talking about podcasting, right? That's all he's going to be talking about. He's not going to be talking about uh, Gorilla Glue Girl. He, <laughs> he's not going to talk about... Uh, the weekend and the, that performance, right? He's going to be talking about podcasting and people who's made a dent in that world. And so if you show up consistently talking about what you normally talk about, they're going to deem you as an expert. And his following has grown. His club has grown. You heard the bag has grown. You know what I mean? Uh, so, like, I think Clubhouse is... is still great at this time. I am interested to see what happens when the big dogs, AKA Facebook, AKA Twitter, LinkedIn will probably grab it too. Like when the big dogs who's been doing it for a minute goes, yeah, give me that. Give me, it, you're not going <laughs> to give me that. You're not. Okay. You know what? I, I'll just, I'll just rip it off. I'll just copy you. I was, you don't, I could I could give you a lot of money right now. You don't want to just give it to me. I don't I don't know. How do you think? Okay, so Sean, what do you think about when the big dogs come in? Uh, the first the first thing that comes to my mind is I remember when what Instagram did to Snapchat. Yeah. Like Instagram made me delete my Snapchat. I ain't I don't, I don't even know what's going on over there. You know what I'm saying? Like so like I could just imagine if like an Instagram like did like created the, the features like Clubhouse did. You know, yeah. because the, the cool thing about Clubhouse though, what we haven't topped on right now, like like the cool thing about it is everybody's at an equal playing field. Yes. There's no blue badge. There's that there, there's nobody with like there's some people that have been there for a while and after a while they sit in rooms they get the crazy amount of followers. Yes. We understand that. But right now, those people who are used to those millions of followers on Instagram, they're jumping into these rooms at Clubhouse, reading other people's bios and already realizing, hold on, let me respect and get this person a stamp. Let me pull them up. Let me make them a, a green moderator. Yeah. You know, they, they, they're looking at it like, hold on, if it's an equal playing field and we both out on the field and I ain't got none of my weapons, none of my tools, this person actually can't compete with me. They mm. might not have spent the money on ads. They might not have been in the right rooms I've been in, but looking at what they're doing, yeah, that that they're worthy. You know, you would never get that respect on Instagram. Uh, so I think that's the key with Clubhouse. I think right now, I don't care who it is. Like for me, even with podcasting, 
I don't care how big they are. When we get into those rooms together and we both start looking around the corner, fam, we can do some things together. Mm. Oh. Oh, uh, I got, I got, I got, I got one. I got one. Okay. All of us for this 20th episode. Hold on. Let me do one more. Hear me? For the 20th episode, we got to put out what our guest wish list is. Okay. So uh, for all, all the people who are listening, watching, right? Whoever we say, you just should send it. You should, you know, if you know them, DM them, text them, whatever it is. We're going to go kind of like back and forth. I'm going to let Moose go first. Then Sean, then me, because y'all know I'm a whole animated character over here in these streets. So, uh, Moose, who, who, what's your wish list? Like, Man. if you can yeah, have I, anybody. Yeah, I think w- the person that immediately comes to mind is... Uh, is Jerry Lorenzo from Fear of God. Mm. So, yeah. I love how Jerry's moving right now. Jerry just built put his a promo brand. out, too. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No. Jerry's doing his thing, man. And uh, we actually, uh, there's a personal ties from, actually from Queens, Nick. There's somebody, a stylist here, who connected with him out in L.A. Uh, a, a long time ago. And, and that's kind of how we got to know about him. And funny enough, Sean, he used to be a big party promoter out in L.A. too, <laughs> and then jumped into the fashion space, created the Fear of God, uh, you know, that, that line, collaborated with Nike. Now he jumped with Adidas. And I don't know too many people who do that. Like, I know a lot of people who leave Adidas to go to the check, but I've never seen anybody leave Nike to go to Adidas. So I think having somebody like him on the show, that would be dope. That mm. would be dope. Sean. Mm. Sean, do you got a list? You got one person? Got, like, I'm, I'm here I, for the I list, got, guy. <laughs> I got, uh, got a couple people on the list. Um, some of them I'm really close to. If I'm not close to them, I'm like one person away from them, uh, which I think would be dope because I okay. think it could happen really soon. Uh, Damon John's one, uh, which I think is an easy play. Uh, Damon John's one. Um, uh, Kevin Hart's one. I just want to see what the image is like in person. Okay. Uh, I want to see if we can match that. Uh, LeBron James is one. Okay. Because I think, mm. I think, he, I think okay. he's Okay, you hear the these court. names? Wow. <laughs> you hear these names? Hey, can I go again? <laughs> let, hey, let me go again. Hold on a second. Like, can like, we do a redo? Moses is like, yo, I was trying to go low. Like, Shoot. wait. Yeah. Hold on. We, going, like we going high, high? What's up? We got to go high. You know, the reason why I say go high is because if you asked me that question back in 2018, I would have told you, I won't add my lap. How I can get it happen? But when I got them in like the first six months of doing a podcast, I wasn't even shooting big enough. Mm. You know, I I had to do more podcasts in the world. But I said, you know, so I got to go hard. I got to go harder. And I got strategies. So we're going to make something happen. Look, Mo, you you want to try to go again? You want to try? Shit, I might as well add some names to them. Go ahead, add, add, add the names. Add the names. Do the names real hey, quick. We'll do hey, a redo. Just, Hold on, real quick. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Moose is redoing his list. Just yeah, forget. Yeah, yeah. Let me like if I had the the <laughs> men in black men little black. thing. <laughs> 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 Don't worry about whatever. You just heard Sean's wish list. Let's go into Moose. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go again, Jerry. I'm going to play devil's advocate and say Kanye because I seen his episode mm. with Joe. You and can't I'm steal like, hey. minds. You can't steal minds. You know I talk about Kanye almost every oh, episode. Man. You can't yeah, steal man. mine. Yay. Got, got to bring wow. Kanye back. Um, and, and definitely a New York legend, man. I'd like to see somebody like... Uh, you know, a Victor Cruz or a Derek Yo, Jeter. Just somebody. all of mine. Near, this is near, crazy. Near. <laughs> this I might is connect, crazy. I might, I might connect you to somebody that got the Victor Cruz one for you. Oh, bro. listen. Wow. Listen. Um, I'm not letting Moose talk no more because he stole all of mine. <laughs> so I'm just going to listen. Listen. Victor Cruz. Okay. I want Victor Cruz. The, Moose said it. I'm going to just second it. Okay. We're, we're both black and Puerto Rican. Hello. Um, I'm just saying you should be on the Nikki and Moose show. We need to break down that brand after football. But right. that's you know, that's that's just one. Odell. Hello. Okay. Hello. We <laughs> we need to talk about what you're doing right now on the positive wave. Like your brand went crazy. Okay, your brand went crazy, and there's some things you're doing behind the scenes that's not even being talked about. 
I just want to know if you could be on Nikki and Moose. Rick Ross, sir. Hello. Mm. Okay. We already had a little bit of a connection. You shared it on your stories. I'm just saying, okay, we have a bond. I want to showcase how you are doing your business, your personal brand on a daily basis, how many stories you are doing, and there's no story that isn't being shown without a product. That needs to be recognized. That needs to be talked about. I already know that you went to Fat Joe and you said, listen, this is the richest I've ever been. When Fat Joe said, yo, does that really work? I need to understand this. I need to understand the mailbox money that you're making just off of your uh, mansion. I'm just saying. Rick Ross. I love it. I'm, li listen, listen. And I'm going to say two more. I'm going to say two more. One of a personal Kodak Lens. Okay. Oh, Lenny S. Yes. All right. His daughter was his daughter was on my street team. His daughter was on my street team. Listen, <laughs> Lenny S, I adore the moves. You made this comment that look, I'm not a I'm not a photographer. They just identified me as that because I used to always have the camera with my friends, but I'm not a photographer, right? He always destined to be an exec and he spoke that into existence. He went from the street team to now an executive rock nation. I'm trying to make the same moves. I'm just saying, Lenius, I need you on Nikki and Moose. Hear me? Bye. And, and I'm going to shoot for the stars, aim for the moon. Um, Mr. Sean Carter. Oh, Hello. Man. Hello. Oh, man. Listen. Mic drop. Um, I know you don't come outside too much. <laughs> I, I know this. Um, and I understand, but since I'm already bringing on Lenny in future episodes, I'm just saying you don't even have to be on video. I just need maybe five minutes of you just saying something and I can make a whole episode of it. I will replay that joint yeah. over and over and over again. Use the music that you allow us to put on. It will be a whole celebration. We are trying to celebrate our living legends it needs to be done. Five minutes of your time. I'm not asking for the hour. I'm not asking for 30 minutes. I'm asking for five. Um, that's all. Hey, I don't know. That's just that's just my that's wish list. Powerful. That's, that's just powerful list. I'm I'm listen. You gotta you gotta speak it into existence. Okay, one more question. One more question. And everybody knows my answer, but those who have passed. Who would you have mm. wished, right, that you yeah. had on your podcast? Man, that's the easy one, man. It's Mamba, man. It's Kobe. It's, it's, wow. it's nobody else. It's nobody. It's nobody. Else. That respect. Yeah. I would. I would. I mean, I would have came in there. Was I would have came in there so ready. Um, uh, words can't even describe it. The amount of money I would have paid just to make it happen, to get to the spot. Um, how I would have maneuvered to, to get to that spot. I don't even care if I had to fly somewhere that nobody has ever flown before, but Kobe. Mm, mm. Moose. Mm. Man, that's a tough one. Honestly, I, I don't even know if I would have if I have somebody yet. Really? Kobe, Kobe's good. Yeah, Sean, you st you stumped me with <laughs> that. Stole Shoot, like, <laughs> dang, Kobe. <laughs> Kobe's a legend, but you know what? I will I will say this, uh, old school, old school. But Muhammad Ali, you know, I think the like to get a prime time Ali on 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 a modern day type, you know, energy and this stuff that would have been dope. Modern day Ali on this podcast would have been fire. Facts. Um, mine. Everybody knows mine. I don't even gotta say it. Nipsey. Wow. Facts. We're, even though we're still going to do a whole episode, that would have been super dope to have. Uh, I'm going to say one more. I'm going to say Big Pun. Uh, shout out to Pun. Uh, his anniversary just a few days ago. Well, depending on when you hear this, you know what I mean? But um, Pun, like, first off, like, broke records for the Hispanic community. Um and just died too soon. But his lyrics, nobody can mess with. He was a clown, uh, a family man. I, I would have just loved to just have just like a whole conversation with my man. Because he just, he just looks fun. I feel like we would be, 
we would be great friends. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Moose, what's your, what's your final question? What's your final question? Man, I, Sean, g- give me a little bit more about that. You know, I, I think not so much that how, obviously, those are your secrets, you know, in terms of how you approach people. But I, I imagine people are still a little like, man, you got all these big names. You're continuing to shoot even higher. Well, what's the secret to like the interaction? Is there something that, you know, you use previously mm. notable, you know, folks to, to, to attract others or how, what's that? What's that? Yeah. What's that cycle like now? Man, that's a great question. Dude, I'm a relationship builder. And here's the here's the scary part. I mean, my wife was talking about it earlier. Uh, here's the scary part about my relationship building, especially during COVID. Not only have the relationships gotten crazy, crazy stronger, but I haven't met a lot of people in person yet. So that makes me say, oh, snap, man, fam, it's going to be crazy. But one of the secrets is this, is that, of course, there's a pitch where I'll use, you know, um, relatable names that's been on my show, kind of like a domino effect. I kind of maneuver around the room. So if I mention 10 of your friends that you personally know or 10 of your friends who may have been on your show, it's an aha to do the podcast, right? Uh, But for me, the biggest tip I would say is that I take people, whether you're on my show, I take you along the journey with me. And, I, and what I mean by that is that if there is a brand deal that I'm going to do in the future, I try to figure out, yo, how can I have them a part of it? If there's a conference I'm going to do in the future, how can I have them a part of it? And I think that is what makes me so more like, you know, it gets you from an email to on a text. So I would say probably out of all those guests I got on my show, I'm bold enough to say 80% of them, I have their phone number and I can text them. And not only can I text them, I can text them personal stuff. I can text them uh, contracts. I remember uh, when I had Matthew Knowles on the show, um, I figured out, okay, how can I continue this relationship? Because I was introduced to him. And the way I was introduced to him, um, which I would have never got that contact, is because I was at Ed Milet's house. And you guys know he has a lot of celebrities coming through that house. And I remember these, these guys were leaving. Like, these guys were like, I see him on ESPN all the time, like, leaving. Like, they just started 30 for 30. He was like, Sean, you know them? I was like, no, nah, I don't really know them, know them, but I see them on TV. You need to get to know them. And I remember him saying that to me. And I was like, what do you mean by that? Because when you get into these rooms, again, to these spaces, they open up their catalog. You know, and, and you're not asking for their phone number. They're like, yo, hold on, yo, get my number. You know, like, hold on, I don't have to leave yet. I can make I can make my jet wait. I'm like, damn, all right, we're gonna make it wait. But when they introduced me to him, I figured out, okay, how can I keep bringing him along things? And that relationship, uh, I've interviewed him three times. I have a lot of different phone calls with him. Um, he saved me from signing bad contract deals. Um, so I, I would say the relationship is to get people to show your podcast, but maybe on a text message, maybe on a brand deal, those sort of strategies I would share with you. And if you're wondering about how to pitch yourself, I got a lot of tools for that in my tool belt. So you can check out any of the links. Uh, you can catch the, the free ebooks. You can catch the, the podcast secrets revealed ebook or even my pitch deck. And you can definitely have that as well. Listen, listen, we're going to do a really quick Speed round of tangible things because I want to reward the people who are watching this all the way at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna do something different, right? Um, so for those people who have been very interested in doing their own podcast, if it's for them and everything, we're gonna give you some of the things that we use. It's gonna be real quick. I'm gonna ask one question, they're all gonna give their part to it, right. And that it'd be like three, four things. Y'all ready? Get it. Okay. All right. Um, what mic are you using to do the podcast currently? Not the beginning. What do you, what mic are you using? Because some people are like, yo, I want what you're using. Don't tell me anything <laughs> else but what you're using. I want to look like Sean. I want to <laughs> sound and look like Sean, Moose, and Nikki and all that. I want to do that. So, Sean, yeah. what mic are you using? SM7B. Same mic that uh, Michael Jackson shot Thriller on. Mmm. Moose. Yep. Same one. Same one. Mm. SMB. Yep. I'm using a different one. I'm using the RE20. I call it the Joe Button mic. You know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> next one. Um, this is going to be a me and Sean one because Moose don't deal with the tech side. What hosting, podcast hosting, are you on? I'm on Buzzsprout. What are you on? Spreaker. 
Okay. All right. All right. Listen, y'all better be taking notes. Um, you, you two people, you get to rewind. Everybody gets to rewind. But anyways, okay. Uh, camera. What camera are you using to shoot your podcast for the video side of things? John. Canon, Canon M50 24 millimeter lens. Hey, Moose. Yeah, Canon A6500. We got a custom lens on this one. I think it's a 35. Oh, I'm using Canon M50 with the 50 millimeter. Nifty 50, you know what I mean? Okay, la last one, last one. All right. Are you... Hold on, Sean. Let me, let me just... Let me put it towards you, right? Let me put it towards you. Uh, how often are you posting clips about your podcast? Probably three times a week. Okay. Okay. I'm going to answer for me and Moose. Uh, almost every single day. Yay! <laughs> oh, almost every single day. We did. Okay. No, this is... This is a really good one. Do you have a separate uh, page for your podcast? Just creating one because I almost got hacked. Yay. And uh, follow us on Nikki and Moose everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter. You know, we, we everywhere. But uh, Sean... I totally appreciate you being on here. I want you to drop the podcast, drop the yeah. ebook, drop where they could yeah. find you. Just drop everything in the world because we appreciate you and we want to give you our platform for you to say whatever you need to say. Now, first off, shout out to y'all. Congratulations on the 20th episode. You guys have been absolutely killing it. I wish I was... Like, like fam, I wish I was covering this hard at episode 20 because I wouldn't even know the visual stuff. I was just like, yo, pick up the Skype call, fam. Pick up the Skype. You know, so y'all are definitely crushing it. Uh, but you can find me anywhere at Sean R. Anthony underscore. That's my official Instagram handle. Um, it's the only one, Sean R. Anthony underscore. Um, you also can find our page, Schools Over Now What. That's the podcast as well. So download Schools Over Now What on all platforms. If you want to learn more about podcasting, though, if you want to figure out how to monetize, how to launch, how to get the back, but also get the celebrity, I have a new ebook called Podcast Seekers Reveal. You can definitely check that out in any of my links, as well as take any of my master classes on how to build a brand with podcasting. Man, I'm excited. And I tell people all the time, man, just whatever you're doing in life, just dream it, believe it, and go out and get it.